Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part four of the most Kerbal spacecraft ever. And, well, we're going to try building a single stage to orbit launch vehicle. Now, how are we going to get the thrust to mass ratio required to do this? Well, we're going nuclear. Yes, we're going to bring in old Boom Boom, the Orion project, and detonate a bunch of nuclear weapons to drive this nuclear sub into the air and hopefully all the way into space. Now, having built this thing and attached it onto the rear, now the hard part is really coming up with the aerodynamics because and the landing gear. This takes a stupendous amount of time to figure all this out. So, uh, what we're doing first is the landing gear, which is, of course, very important. We have to drop that way down because when we pull back on the stick, the rear of the aircraft is going to go down and you do not want to scrape your pusher plate on the runway because it will invalidate the guarantee. The warranty specifically says it's only for using nuclear weapons against. You're not allowed to bump it into anything else. Otherwise, all bets are off and it's not guaranteed to be secure against nuclear blasts, whether they be fission fusion or something pumped by antimatter. Actually, I'm just making that last part up because the antimatter bomb doesn't exist yet. It's more like the, the doesn't matter bomb. Anyway, having returned to the realm of procedural wings, having fixed everything because of Kerbal joint reinforcement and the nirvana of flyable aircraft that it brings, uh, yet yeah, we build out the rear of the aircraft. We have some cool little uh, fins and everything set up. Very careful to make sure that everything is in the right place and that all the fins are set up correctly. And then, then we are ready to go for it. Sitting on the runway, doesn't it look magnificent? Oh yes, this is going to be a blast. Literally, a nuclear blast. I hope all those buildings are secure against the power of nuclear weapons, because this could be bad. I like how these things are just kind of puffs of smoke on the runway. And there we go! Look at that! It speeds up and it takes off and it flies like a beautiful flying submarine powered by nuclear weapons. Instead of having the nuclear weapons loaded inside it, we are shooting the nuclear weapons out of the back and this thing is practically going supersonic as we perform a aileron roll, <laughs> uh, dis ascending from the launch site. Beautiful! Beautiful. I mean, obviously, if you looked at that to admire its beauty, you would be blinded every time its engine fired. So uh, if you're going to admire the beauty of this thing, make sure you bring goggles because you would not want to describe the most beautiful thing you've ever seen as also the last thing you have ever seen. Anyway, I'm quite glad with the performance of this. It definitely could use a lot of tuning. Uh, it's only managing to pull about three Gs in the turn here, and I think I could do a whole lot better. Uh, obviously, I've actually took all the fuel out of this because we have really no need for the, the liquid fuel. We do have a need for monopropellant, but I forgot to include it. So I forgot to include any uh, RCS thrusters. So another interesting thing is that in the vacuum, this uh, engine will actually perform thrust gimballing. I've no idea how that works, but the vehicle, I guess, by angling the pusher plate is able to get some sort of rotation on the thing. Anyway, let's try and do a flyby of the space center, which should, of course, be completely destroyed by now. But just in case, we're going to fly over detonating nuclear bombs as we go and make sure that the air blasts finish off anything that could possibly have survived our first launch. Look at it go 370 meters per second, easily surpassing the sound barrier without even trying to build something that uh, has some amazing thrust to weight ratio. This thing, by the way, I don't actually know what the thrust to mass ratio of this thing is because the engine kind of works in a weird way. The, this is, incidentally, is the Rover Dude version of the mod and worked on it a while back but hasn't really finished it. So we have to pretty much uh, work with what we have. As janky and crazy as it seems, at least it works in version 1.1.3 which is the one that I'm currently working in. Let's try pulling up a loop here, up and over the top. Let's see, yeah, our velocity is dropping as we start to climb higher, so um, combination of drag and gravity is not good. I wonder if we can maintain velocity while in such a steep climb. 200, oh, uh, it's really hard to tell my velocity because 
the velocity jumps up every time the thing fires and then drops back down the moment after. We can also take a look from inside the cockpit, which I strategically placed on top so that I wouldn't have to invert the controls. Look! We can see the clouds over there, the sun there, and we should probably roll this thing the other way up. We're using the ailerons on the wings to perform roll operations. I might need some bigger ones because it does seem to be really, really kind of sluggish. But what do you expect for something that is several hundred tons and designed to, you know, swim around in the water? Anyway, a good consequence of that Emelman turn is that I am now at a reasonable altitude that I can begin my run to try and get into orbit here. So we're just going to hold a moderate attitude and hope that the thrust from this combined with the lift from the wings is sufficient to bring it into orbit without it disintegrating due to uh, you know, overheating or excessive aeronautical stresses. Well, really, it's more aerodynamic stresses, but I do like the sound of uh, aeronautical since this is a boat. Although the term nautical does derive from the, the Greek for navigation. And to be honest, this thing is not going to be particularly good at navigation once it gets into space because we don't have any reaction control thrusters on this thing. We don't, we're just going to have to rely on the thrust vectoring that this engine gives us <laughs> as it fires occasionally. I don't think this would actually work in reality because, of course, the nuclear blast would tear off the wings very quickly. But hey, it's a giggle nevertheless. Okay, come on, up to 20 kilometers, and we're moving at one kilometer per second. Now, the real danger is that I might actually catch fire or melt or explode or all of the above simultaneously. We have to balance the gain in velocity with the gain in altitude. If you gain altitude too quickly, then you won't be able to maintain it. If you gain velocity too quickly, you will burn up, and somewhere in there, hopefully, there exists a happy medium where you end up in orbit. At which point you'll wonder whether the nuclear reactor on this sub actually operates in zero G. Moreover, you'll wonder, will this nuclear reactor work when it doesn't have any seawater to help cool it? 1400 meters per second and now we have some serious shimmying going on here. Basically every time the acceleration kicks in, that's when the thrust vectoring happens. So. The thing kind of just wobbles around, it sets up some really big oscillations back and forth here. I am endeavouring to keep it stable, but at this point it will be largely down to the raw power of nuclear weapons as to whether we get into space uh, as opposed to any finesse in my flying skills. There we have our apoaps is now high enough that we will be in space, but be careful, the circularization maneuver, we will not have any control over our, our attitude. We're just going to have to wait and hope that uh, we end up pointing in the correct direction when we are close enough to our apoaps to actually get ourselves into orbit. And then, I don't know how we're going to get back home, but I'm sure it will involve nuclear weapons and planes and things like that. Engine is shut down! The nukes are no longer being fed. The Coca-Cola vending machine is shut down. And so there you have it. One more great step in my quest for the most Kerbal spacecraft ever. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>